Hey guys, and today we're going to be going over, well, this. Um, so if you couldn't tell, I wasn't purposefully making it low res, uh, but this is just a shader that I made. And it's only low res because we can't really have access to physically zooming in besides, I guess, slowness. But uh, this does provide some form of zoom with kind of low res. And uh, we're going to be doing just, this is just like an example so that I can teach you guys a little bit about shaders and vanilla. So when you're working on shaders, you need a few things. You need the game output log, which you can Google search if you don't know how to open. Uh, and it needs to have all these selected because a lot of shader info, like debug stuff, shows up on info for some reason, not on warning. Uh, so if something goes wrong, it will be in the info button and it will tell you what line you had a problem with. But it's pretty hard to debug these things. So you're also going to need to go into your versions, into whatever version you're on. Go to the jar file and then just open it with some kind of archiver so you can see the files. So these are the two very important things when you're working on shaders. A lot of times you're jumping off of somewhere else because you can't just magically add new ones and then they just show up in game. You have to use a existing one and then branch off from there. So we're going to create a new pack and I'm just going to type in demo for this one. Uh, so when you have a resource pack, you need the pack.mc meta and the pack.png as well as a folder that just goes to assets, right? So we're gonna make a folder for assets. The PNG and the MC meta doesn't really matter as long as the pack.mc meta says version six. And let's do uh, for demo. And that's okay. So, I mean, if you don't have a resource pack already, you would make a new file, save it as a .mc meta file, name it pack. All right, so in assets, we're gonna copy this extension. So assets, then Minecraft. There we go. Okay, so there's this new folder called shaders. So we're gonna make that. Okay, so now you have post and you have program. So post is kind of like what is going to trigger what's going on. And program is what that thing that gets triggered is going to do. So program is what's physically zooming in and post is what tells you to zoom in when you spectate a creeper. Today we're just doing spectate creeper. Obviously I have some way cooler methods with, uh, but they require a little bit more complex knowledge of shaders to do. Um, so we're gonna start with the simple case. Uh, so yeah, we'll be hooking off of something that already exists. You can do this with a glowing effect as well. Uh, it's a common trick. You summon a end crystal, give it glowing effect. You can mess around with that because end crystals with glowing effect will trigger the shader for everybody anywhere in the world. I just want to use creeper because it's a little simpler to deal with. No things I got to explain that are exceptions. And then also like with glowing, you have to hide the glowing entity sometimes if you're not doing the ender crystal trick. And that could be a little bit annoying. So we're going to just go with the basics. So first we need post. This is how it's going to go somewhere. So we have all these ones that the game already uses in one way or another. Obviously there's ones like creeper and spider which happen when you spectate them then there's some better ones like transparency which we'll use later which trigger when you turn on fabulous shader i'm just going to put fast since we don't need it right now um, but those ones are applied automatically when you have fabulous on okay so let's go ahead and pick creeper so creeper.json these are there's going to be basically three types of files json vsh and fsh and those are open gl language type files and json are their special json components that you can mix and match and mess with. So obviously you're going to need some kind of a text editor to edit these. Uh, we're gonna work with creep with uh, sublime text. I will zoom in quite a bit so that anybody that is on mobile can, or something, some smaller device can see this pretty well. Uh, so let's zoom in a lot. So shaders have three, well really two key components. You got your targets and your passes. So a target is kind of like something that holds something it holds a texture essentially um, it holds basically like a 2d image most of the time um, and then passes are kind of like an order of operations so kind of like these so first we do this command then we do this one then we do this one this one this one right uh, but what we do is we put targets into the passes and there's a few default targets so main is just going to be main so it's what i see like this excluding any special 
things, if that makes sense to you. Like main is kind of like what is eventually going to get drawn onto your screen, which is why at the end of this, your out target is main, okay? So in this shader, it does some, like for the regular creeper shader, it plays the, it does a few passes. So the first pass it does is going to be color convolve. So this is going to play a program called color convolve. It's going to take an input as the main and output as the swap. You cannot make input and output the same. Uh, it might not show up as a bug, but it definitely won't update properly. So you have to take input to a temporary target. So swap, the main goes to swap, and then the swap goes to main at the end right down here. Uh, and that's a pretty common practice of you put something on a placeholder, then the placeholder goes in using just a simple kind of uh, input method. So this will be bits. There's a couple different ones like blit. Um, we'll go over some of the common ones as well. Uh, but anyways, I'm just trying to show you how to mess with, uh, just mess with things that you already have available to you in this one. So anyways, we have color convolve. We're not trying to color convolve. We're trying to zoom in. So we're just going to change this to zoom. It's going to be our own special one. Uniforms are like matrices that you pass to it that hold data. So for example, color convolve needs red, green, and blue matrix. And obviously when you're spectating a creeper, it turns everything green. So they have these special values on the green matrix only. We don't need uniforms because we're just zooming. It's a very simple case. So it's just as simple as you have an input. The input is going to be main and it's going to run the zoom program. And then it's going to output on the swap. Uh, and then again, we can get rid of this. This isn't important. I guess you could probably use the same thing, but uh, uh, well, definitely not because bits is going to like turn this into pixely and technically we're not pixely. So we're going to change this to blit. Blit is probably the most common one you'll see. There's two versions, blit and blit underscore copy. Uh, we'll cover blit's copy in a later video, but it's like a special version of blit. All this does is it just takes the input and puts it on the output. That's, that's pretty much all it does. Blit copy is like a special one because sometimes blit doesn't work when you're like rotating a screen and you have some weird cases. Blit copy just like accounts for all cases. It's like the check for everything kind of case. But anyways, so this is a pretty simple shader. It might be confusing to look at since you don't understand all the concepts 100%, but you have targets and you have swap. This is like creating your own scoreboard or your own dummy variable. And then you have, so passes, and then the passes is going to first take main and put it on swap and run zoom. So zoom is going to do something to main and put it on swap. Then you're going to run blit. You're going to do something to swap and put it on main. And the do something is nothing really. You're just swapping them, which is why they use the nomenclature of swap. Okay, so now let's go on to what does zoom do? And what does, well, you don't really need to know what blit does, but we'll take a look at it real fast anyway. Uh, so we're going to go into program. So uh, blit, blit actually is pretty simple and this can get really, it can get really complicated with all the specific word choices. Uh, so it could be kind of hard to find. Um, so I'm not going to cover what most of these do, but you have samplers and you have uniforms. Those are the main things. And then vertex and fragment are what uh, programs to run on this thing that you're passing into here. So we pass main into here and then we run vertex and fragment and vertex and fragment do stuff like, so here is fragment. Fragment has to do with color. So fragment is just going to get the pixel at the coordinates, multiply it by color modulate, which usually is not going to do anything. And you're going to put that onto fragment color. Okay. So what this does is for every pixel, this loop will play. This is kind of like a loop. So it'll, it'll run these lines for every pixel. Text chord is the location of where you're at in the loop, which you can't really, it's something that'll just increment on its own. And diffuse sampler is kind of like your picture that you're reading. So you're going to go to a location in your picture, create a, a texture 2D, which is just going to give you um, R, G, B, alpha on a vector. And then you're going to store the RGB alpha onto the current pixel you're at, which would be GL frag color. Uh, so yeah, so blit is very simple. It just uh, samples where you're at and puts it where you're at on the rendering process. 
And then vertex shader has to do with the corners of your screen. So in the upper left, bottom, right, center corners, those are different vertexes. And it lets you kind of like move where the vertexes are. So essentially like you can take the corners and stretch them. Now, this would probably be where you're going to want to run this zoom thing, but I have a set of zoom code that runs in FSH so that you can a little bit easier adjust it in two dimensions instead of just one dimension. Uh, so we're gonna be covering that. So let's go ahead and close the blit because blit will just run on its own and work as intended. Uh, so let's go ahead and copy these two right here. And since they're such a simple case and we're gonna open them up and we're gonna edit them. So we don't, there's a lot of stuff here we don't need but I'm just gonna not touch it for the sake of not doing anything confusing. We're just gonna type zoom here. So it'll play our own zoom FSH file. So we need to make a zoom FSH file. And now it has the same stuff as before, but we're going to change what this does. Uh, I'm not going to, this, <laughs> this is by no means a tutorial on how to do GLSL code. Uh, so I'm going to just be pulling from my previous ver project and uh, I'll leave a pastebin link to this code. Well, I'll just leave the link to where this code is, a pastebin link to this code in the description. Um, but yeah, this program was made by Derdisco Hound. Hunt, or Disco Hunt on Discord. Um, there was actually a lot of guys, and I'll let you know all the resources that I used when I was going through shaders. Uh, but just know that it basically makes every pixel on your screen at a different location with reference to the center of the screen, I believe. Uh, and you can mess with these two variables to change how wide, how far they get spread at the top and the bottom to make a trapezoid shape. And you can mess with this one to mess with the zooms. It, 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 let's see if you guys also caught this. You're going to see here, malformed line at 10 passes out target. So this will tell you an error. Uh, sometimes it's on the warning, sometimes it's on the info. I had an extra comma there. So if I refresh, it shouldn't have that error anymore. It's good to clear logs when you're going to refresh. That way you can see the new stuff when the new stuff is there. So no errors. So let's go ahead and spectate. And yeah, that's pretty zoomed in. Okay, so then obviously we have to figure out some way to apply the shader. So I went ahead and this isn't a command tutorial by all means, um, but I made it a scoreboard that is zoom and it activates when you right click a carrot on a stick. Then when you, when this happens, it runs the conditional command to summon the creeper, TP the creeper to you, then put you in spectator mode, then spectate the creeper, then set your zoom to zero. Then if you're near a creeper, a shader creeper, then uh and it detects you outside of spectator mode then kill it put you back in creative so now when i go like this oh, now when i go like this it'll apply the shader <laughs> uh you can see the flash of the creeper sometimes though so it's not perfect obviously you would want some nice idealized case where the shader triggers on its own in which i'll show you with the shader sauce I think, right? Shader sauce. This, I think this is the right pack. But when you have the shader sauce, ignore the numbers in the top left of the screen. And you have the shader sauce. It'll zoom when you click the carrot on a stick. And just like that. So it's a lot more, it's a lot more uh, smooth and it's easier to implement. Less commands, obviously. Uh, but it's a lot more complicated. You'll see with the numbers on the top left, I'm doing some crazy number stuff, but yeah. So I was mainly just covering the shader though, and I will eventually cover the, uh, special shader here, the, whatever you want to call it, the shader sauce shader. Uh, but what it does is it basically reads a 3d model color and it saves that until it sees another one of a similar color and then it reads off what the alpha level is. So if the alpha level is 252 out of 255, then it'll do this shader and so on and so on. But yeah, I'll be re releasing that later when I get a little bit more in depth on shaders, but this is just a beginner's tutorial. So what we covered today is how to hook off of existing shaders in the game like Creeper, 
what passes are and uh, what they refer to, as well as the in target and out target. We also went over program and what programs are and what you can change in here. So this is the fragment. It'll refer to a fragment shader. This is the vertex. It'll refer to a .vsh file of the same name. Uh, you can also have subfolders that I didn't explain, but you could have like uh, debug slash, right? And then it'll be in the debug, the program debug folder. Uh, now uniforms we kind of talked about, but we didn't go over them specifically. There's a lot of uniforms that are just like special that are used in everything, such as outsize, proj mat. Color modulate is pretty common. There's a couple of the common ones. Uh, then samplers, we kind of went over samplers. So samplers are kind of like a set of information. Like the diffuse sampler is mainly just going to be all the pixels on your screen. There's a couple other samplers like depth sampler. That's going to give you info about every pixel's depth on the for each pixel. So you can actually see like that one, that pixel that I'm looking at right over there is X distance away. So you can actually do that, but it's a little more advanced. Um, now, if you want more info on this, I will link a really good tutorial like guide Google Doc in the description that covers most of the shader stuff, just not the depth stuff because that's newer. Um, and it has some examples that are somewhat out of date, but some of them do work. Uh, it was by, I think it was made by Sir Bennett, but yeah. Uh, and then special shout out to Sir Bennett, oh, nowhere, VDB man and or disco hunt for helping me make my secret, my shader sauce pack, my special, uh, I haven't come up with a name for it, but it's essentially like a shader selector. Uh, anyways, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>